Hello drone racers. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Game Box Dual Go 4. How's that for a mouthful? But this is a really nice charger that I've started using and using it for almost all of my battery charging. The only problem I've had with it is I actually needed a bigger power supply. For a long time I've been using a 12 volt 5 amp power supply which was plenty but I needed more power so recently on the video I created one of these. This is a 800 watt power supply. 65 amps at 12 volts, which will provide plenty of power for probably a dozen of these. If you need power, go watch that video, which is linked up in the corner right now. But for now, we're gonna look closer at this one. The Dual Go 4 is basically two power supplies in one because it has two sets of connections. I can charge two batteries at a time and they can be completely independent. I don't have to worry about parallel charging problems. I don't have to worry about the current voltages being the same on them. I have two independent connections, so I have two, three, or four cell batteries. So that let, lets me always balance each of my batteries and connect it and see what I've got. So here I can see independent what's happening. So I have a battery connected to them. This is DC powered, so it's 12 to 18 volts. One of the main reasons I got it is it will do HV lipos, which I have a few that I've gotten one of the test lipos, lithium ions, lithium irons, which I have one of those now that'll be in a future video, NICADs, nickel metal hydrides, and even a lead battery. So for the most part, it's going to be used for lipo, but I will use it for my lithium iron or life if you prefer, and my LIHV batteries, the high voltage. Configuration on this is really easy. I have my battery here. I see which side I'm on. So I've got char battery charged and connected on this side. It's a 3S that it tells me. What I need to do is go down to LiPo and I confirm it's on LiPo, but I can see all of the options. So I'm not worried about that. I tell it how big this is. And this is a 1300 milliamp battery that I've got in here. So I'll put in 1300 milliamps. And then I have options. So I have charge, storage, or discharge. I love the storage option. My other charger that I've used for a long time will charge up to half voltage, but it won't but it won't discharge down. So when I'm flying for the day, I always have packs that I didn't use that are at full charge. What I will do is throw them on this, set it to discharge, and just let it go to town until it's got them right at storage charge. So I think that will really help with the life of my batteries. In this case, I think this one's pretty close to storage voltage now. So I go into charge, pressing the Y button. And this design kind of looked like a Nintendo or Game Boy controller. So then here on I, I select how many amps I want to put in it. In this case, I'm not going to be active using the cell. I'm not in a hurry, so I will choose 1.3 amps. And then it conveniently tells me, oh yes, that's 1C. So that's good. It makes it easy to use. And this play button will start it. So then. You don't hit the X to start it, you have to hit the enter here just as an additional safety feature. This will turn red showing me that it's charging and it will then go to the status screen. So it'll stay on the status screen, show me the voltage of each individual cell. I have the option to look at more detailed stats here so it will show me the um, battery resistance once it calculates it out, it'll show me how much power it has put in, what the current voltage input is. So then I just have to sit back and go until it's charged. If I want to do another one, I've got a 4S battery here. I can connect that at the same time. I don't have to start them at the same time or anything weird. I can just do this one completely independently. Now to switch the screen, now it will automatically flip back and forth every so often. If I want to flip back and forth, I can hold X and press the right arrow and it will switch back and forth. So it's really easy to see. So that one's on free ready. I want to go press X to go back, and this is also a 1300 milliamp. So let's say this one I want to go to storage. So I'll go into storage, and it will set it up, and by default it's 2.2 amps, which with this is fine. It's 1.69C, which is fine for a storage charge. It lists my target voltage, so I can change that if I want to, and I can change the other settings, but I haven't needed to. It's been really good. So then I go here and hit the same play button and it will start that part. So here now it's gonna do storage charge and it's going, it'll show me the status of both the left side and then the right side. So here I see I'm almost at storage voltage. It's just gonna put a few volts into it to get it up to storage. I do kind of wish if I told it to stay on one screen it would stay there for longer than it does. But they do firmware updates for this so maybe they'll make a change to it. 
So the other thing I can do is if I don't want to go through and click and find the right screen all the time, I can also hold the X button and then choose the arrow keys. Up will go to my charge task if I want to charge a battery. Right will go to storage and set it up if I want to store the battery. Down will discharge if I want to discharge a battery for some reason. And then left will show me my current status indicator. So it will show me the results of what I'm doing right now. If I want to cancel for whatever reason, I can do it a couple different ways. I can go down arrow to the stop button and press enter start just like I did before. Or there's kind of an emergency stop where I can hold the X and press enter and it will just stop the current cycle right away. So there it changed it from red to green meaning it's not doing anything right now. I can go switch screen means free ready. It's just plugged in, ready to go, just waiting on whatever it is I want to do. When I'm on free ready, it will show me the current voltage. So I can see, you know, it's pretty close to storage voltage. I might just leave it here because I'm not gonna use that today. If it's a case where I decided, oops, I didn't wanna charge that one. I actually wanted to go do storage on that one. I can just switch to that screen, go to the right, which will be storage, and then start that process. Now, because this voltage is actually a little bit high, it's gonna start discharging that battery, which is not what it was doing on the other one. So it's charging one, discharging the other at the same time. Very often when it's doing that, it will kick in the fan because it's gonna start pulling amps out of the battery and it will has a cooling fan to help it stay cool internally. But that's all automated, you don't have to decide. There it kicks on. So the button combinations here are really well documented in the manual. I've been using this for a while, I'm not sure where the manual was, but it was a good manual that showed me what was happening. So I've been really happy with it. It's really convenient, the storage is great. Being able to charge different sizes has been really handy. And it's not an expensive charger at all. The only negatives I really have for it is the charging leads or the DC leads are really short. I wish these were longer because I have to have the power supply right here. I can't get it very far away. So that can be fixed, but I wish those were a little bit longer. It does only come with XT60 connectors, which is pretty common, but I've got some additional adapters headed this way. So I will be able to connect that up and charge whatever I want. And then same thing for the balance lead. It's really short, it has to plug in here. I like to keep my batteries inside a LiPo bag or a ceramic container that I have when I'm charging. And it's very difficult to do with this one. There's not a lot of extra room, so I would like some additional longer balance leads in order to use with the longer charging lead, so that way I can keep it all secure in a fireproof bag or container just in case. The same company that makes this makes a single battery charger that goes up to six or maybe even eight cells. So I hope to be able to try one of those because I do have some five cell batteries here for some future projects and I can't charge it with these. Actually, I don't have a charger at all. So I'm probably gonna be picking one of those up. I'm happy enough with this. The price is definitely right that I will be giving them a shot with the other one too. Also, I should mention there is a USB port on the side for both firmware upgrades and some statistics that you can log the data if you're one of those people that wants to log your batteries. Externally, you can do that as well. So if you found this review useful, leave us a like down below and comment with what you think of this charger. There are definitely bigger, badder chargers out there, but by the time you combine the power supply that I built and then this charger, it can do a whole lot for a whole little, little a whole little amount of money. Is, is that right? Yeah, we're gonna go with that. So until next time, remember, the only thing they forgot on this was the game cartridge slot.